Since the year 2000, Thunder Bay has been the only U.S. National Marine Sanctuary on the Great Lakes. But that's about to change. Soon, we're likely to have two new freshwater National Marine Sanctuaries, and Canada has set aside parts of the lakes as well. On June 22, 2021, there was big news for Lake Michigan. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, designated the Wisconsin Shipwreck Coast. It's only the second national marine sanctuary in all of the Great Lakes, covering 962 square miles and including 36 nationally significant historical shipwrecks. So the sanctuary, this sanctuary protects cultural resources, primarily shipwrecks that are, you know, icons of our collective past. Uh, the Great Lakes, through much of its history and even today, is an economic engine for North America. The new sanctuary runs along Wisconsin's Lake Michigan shore from two rivers in the north to Port Washington in the south. So this nomination was really driven by the national significance of the collection of shipwrecks here. And you know, they represent a time period from the 1830s to the 1930s where commerce was booming on the Great Lakes. That story is captured here and the places that made that happen are well preserved right here in the marine sanctuaries. The sanctuary designation was a long time coming. It's the result of a years long effort by the communities on the lakefront. And really the communities along the lake shore, Two Rivers, Manitowoc, Sheboygan, Port Washington, with the state, you know, got together and said, we have a vision for a place here. We'd like to protect these places. Uh, we'd like to couple that with tourism. We want to couple that with broader Lake Michigan conservation. And so they had a vision for a National Marine Sanctuary that, that they thought that was a really good fit for this area. Justin Nichols is the mayor of Manitowoc, one of the coastal communities that's part of the new marine sanctuary. Manitowoc is the quintessential Midwestern city, I would say. Um, I mean, uh, Lake Michigan and the Manitowoc River, the, the confluence of those two bodies of water really is what built our community. And since early 1800s, we were building schooners here. The proposal also had the backing of cultural institutions like the Wisconsin Historical Society. We believe it will inspire people. And so whether it's uh, being able to go underwater uh, and take your own dive, or whether you're kayaking over a three-masted schooner that it's only 10 feet below you, uh, we think that people will, will be inspired by these wonderful stories because it is a real live connection to the lake history, the maritime history and a history that maybe is lost for some people. Also supporting the proposal, the Wisconsin Maritime Museum. The Maritime Museum here really is the, the jewel and the crown uh, of our tourist attractions uh, and you know the cultural hub of the town. We've been here for over 50 years. You know, the really interesting thing about this designation is that it started in these communities. Rather than try to vie for NOAA's attention, decided uh, to come together and put together a unified application for this entire coast. So for over 10 years, we've all been working together to bring this to fruition. So it's gonna be a fantastic thing for not just tourism, but for the preservation of the resource itself. NOAA is currently in the process of using sonar technology to map the new sanctuary. This is the coverage that we've gone so far off the coast of Sheboygan. Within this box is our work area, so we have more work to do. Today, they're, they're doing that in the marine sanctuary, but we can take that data. They'll be mapping the sanctuary with the sonar, basically painting the lake bed with sound, getting an image of it. And it's really the first time we've had a detailed look at the lake bed here in the, in the marine sanctuaries. This is the wreck symbol. There's a wreck. They'll be putting a chart here. Mariners know not to put anchors or anything like that on there. This particular one right here is where the, uh, the Sailor Chamberlain is on the chart. You know, we can find cultural resources with that. Shipwrecks kind of pop up on these sonars, uh, but we can take that information and use it to learn about the lake bed, to learn about the lake bed type, habitat, and divasive species. So we say we map once, use many times. And so we'll be sharing this data with biologists and natural resource managers who can use this data to, to do the work they need to do. The sanctuary designation isn't the end of the process, though. The next steps include trying to determine what facilities will be created and where, and the communities that pushed for the sanctuary will have a say as well. 
we'll do an infrastructure study. That'll be one of the first things we do. And so we'll get together with the communities and the state uh, and other stakeholders and say, you know, where would NOAA's presence be if we could stretch it out across these communities? What kinds of things do you want to see NOAA bring to those communities? I think the opportunities are just endless now that we have a national park in our backyard. But Wisconsin Shipwreck Coast isn't the only proposed sanctuary that's moving closer to reality. Soon, there could also be a national marine sanctuary at the other end of the Great Lakes Basin in Lake Ontario. We are looking for two possible areas to become the eventual national marine sanctuary. Uh, the first area is an area that the local community submitted to NOAA, and that is Eastern Lake Ontario. The other area that we're considering is the Thousand Islands region of the St. Lawrence River. Eastern Lake Ontario contains 43 known shipwrecks and one aircraft. And the Thousand Islands region holds 20 more. Historical records suggest there are more to be found. But the aim is to make the history accessible even to non-divers. You know, it's very important for this sanctuary and all sanctuaries to appeal to people who may never get wet because there are very few divers when you consider the percentage of the population. So, you know, through our visitor centers and through our outreach materials, through our live distance learning programs, we need to get that shipwreck experience and, you know, the knowledge and imagery of resources that people may never see directly. The sanctuary designation process takes several years. We started this in April of 2019, and we're anticipating that we can have a sanctuary designated by the end of 2022. Canada's counterparts to the U.S. sanctuaries are called National Marine Conservation Areas. There are two in the Great Lakes administered by Parks Canada. Fathom 5 in Lake Huron is the most easily accessible. Fathom 5 uh, National Marine Conservation Area is just a beautiful location. You can uh, take a, a boat tour to go to the archipelago islands and see geological formations in the shape of flower pots, which is a huge visitor attraction. So in addition to that, there's also 27 submerged marine shipwrecks that uh, a lot of divers and other interested uh, folks, and you can take boat tours around it, but um, Fathom 5 is really unique and accessible to the Canadian public and tourism. Far more remote is Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area at the northern tip of Lake Superior. Much more pristine forests and a much vaster, larger water in which to experience it. So um, lots of folks there as well would also experience island adventures, but in a much more secluded atmosphere much quieter, more tranquility, lots of opportunity for wildlife viewings and unique coastal features. And so the protection and opportunity for conservation in these marine protected areas are huge, but they also provide areas in which visitors can explore and opportunities for education and research and scientific and increasing scientific knowledge with regards to water-based national marine parks. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.